Uh, so this car here, uh, we purchased this off a of fellow out of the States, and it has a supercharger and a few other little goodies on it, and um, uh, uh, Stuart, uh, the owner of Velocity here, uh, wants to uh, beef it up a little bit and put a cage in, make it a little bit safe. The car's making quite a bit of power now, so. Okay, so here we have our Aston Martin uh, roll cage that we make here in the house. Uh, just finished welding it and painting it yesterday. Now we're getting ready to do the uh, installation in this bandage here that we've been working on, our super bandage. Uh, so we'll uh, pull some interior panels and seats and such to make way for installing the roll cage and then we'll get uh, another uh, shot uh, once the cage is installed with the interior. And yeah, it should be nice, a nice build. Installing these panels uh, with the roll cage loose, uh, some of them have to tuck in behind, but they all do fit in uh, without trimming. So just getting the, all these interior trim panels back in here, uh, it's kind of nice that we've made our own jig. Uh, off this business cage so it fits in here without uh, any trimming actually so yeah it's actually going together quite nicely um, just need to leave the roll cage loose to so you can pull it ahead to get these uh, side panels in um, this back panel here will just need one little hole other than that the, side, the, the main uh, panels that you see here uh, all fit quite nicely without trimming just so quite happy with this cage Last episode, we did some um, eighth mile uh, testing with this V8 Vantage uh, with the supercharger. Um, we had, it ran really strong actually, but uh, we had some slippage in fourth gear um, due to some oil actually getting on the clutch. Uh, we had to do some different uh, crankcase venting. It was actually pressurizing the motor too much and uh, bypassing the crank seal. So we've now replaced the seal, done some different uh, PCV venting, and uh, we're going to install a new clutch. Um, so we've gone to this clutch and a special uh, machine flywheel to take higher torque loads than what any of these would normally uh, put out uh, in a naturally aspirated version. So uh, we've gone to this McLeod clutch and a specially machined flywheel, which you see here. Now this will adapt the uh, clutch, which I believe is actually meant for a Corvette. Um, but yeah, it seems to work really well. Alrighty, I'm trying not to bash my head here. It's a little low, but. So last episode, or one of the, uh, no, no, wait a minute. When were we up there? Yeah. I'm not doing a thing. You guys saw the startup. We got the car up and running, figured out that it had a blown fuse and that fuse was actually running the pump for the intercooler. So as soon as we replaced that fuse, noticed that the pump started running and off we go, we were good to go. And we took the car up to our local facility here that we test at, which is Oliver Airport, trailered the car up there, um, ran it down the runway a little bit just to see what was going on. And you could probably hear in a little bit of the footage that we shot that those RPMs were just shooting up. We were a little bit worried that the clutch was gone but when we pulled the car apart, the boys noticed that there was quite a bit of oil coming out of the back of the engine. Um, I think we mentioned in a previous episode, right when we started this series, that this car had actually sat for quite a while. Um, I'd have to go back and check, but I want to say it was probably getting on for two or three years. Um, one of the things that's really not good for seals is when things don't stay lubricated and don't 
um, stayed warm. And so probably just sitting there for that period of time, that seal got a little bit brittle and it's been a little bit cold here when we fired the thing up. We had oil coming out the back of the engine, just got onto the clutch. It wasn't terrible, it didn't hot spot the flywheel at all. But uh, we were able to look up the parts that were put into it, um, get a new clutch for it. We're just adjusting the spacing on the torque tube a little bit as well. So um, all of these earlier vantages come with a spacer behind the release bearing. And when you look at our twin plate kits that we offer for standard cars, you'll notice that we change that spacing um, just to close up um, the space to the bearing um, relative to the total deck height of the clutch. One of the things we noticed was that the clutch pedal take up was a little bit high in the travel. Um, sometimes that can happen as the clutch wears and the, and the engagement moves um, or that it's just not set up right. I'm not sure who actually did the work on this originally um, to spec this clutch into the car. So we took a few measurements on it. We compared them to how we set up our own twin disc clutches for the standard cars. And we decided that we were gonna take a little bit of spacing out of the bearing just to try and move um, that engagement point a little bit and bring it into a point of the pedal that we're a little more comfortable with. Got to see if we got that right. You know, it's possible that uh, it might be dragging a little bit. So um, hopefully our math is right when it goes in. But you can see we got a shiny new clutch in here. That's all ready to go. Just gonna put the torque tube back in and then we'll be able to go back out, do a little more testing and uh, see if that's resolved the problem. And at that point, we got some new rubber to go on the car. This stuff's pretty old, worn out, and uh, we should be ready to go to the dyno. And we can compare it against some of the figures that we've seen on stock vantages on the same dyno. And that should give us a pretty good reference of how much power this car is actually making. Okay. Okay, so we've installed the uh, the new clutch here, this aftermarket clutch, and uh, I just finished shimming the slave cylinder, which is quite crucial on these. You want to get your depth right uh, for your uh, pedal when you play. Uh, once we do that, as so we've uh, taken uh, just a little over a millimeter out um, from the original, and we're gonna try and see how that works and uh, go from there. But yeah, so next it'll be install the torque tube, the drive shaft, transaxle, and yeah, we'll do some more testing.